first. Oh, oh yeah. I forgot to bring them up. Yeah, you want to have those handy. Those yeah. are important. I got to write some show notes real quick. Come on, sing me. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have any notes for this here show. For the for those wondering, our background animation is uh, a short segment of the Winter Games game from the yes, C64. I saw that. Which contains the worst it. sound ever. I'll play it for you as a preview. Here it is. What the hell is that even? I love it so much. Is that is that the Commodore 64 version? Yeah, that's the C64 version right there. Okay, so that's that's epic. Come on, man. Uh, that's a little fart up, sound up your again. game. You you're working with the classic Sid chip there, and you're just gonna give us that. Come yep. on, man. How Come about on. this? Yeah, a little fart sound it makes. <laughs> that definitely sounds like a fart. <laughs> Just a wet fart. All right, here goes. Yep. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy. The show is about... Are you in? You're in. Okay, you're in here. I see you in there. Wait, are you, you in? in? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's always yeah, in. Oh, in. Oh, yeah, he's oh, in. Yeah, he's oh, in there. Right, yeah. oh. All right, here we go. In three... Whoops. God oh, damn it. Gotta... Why isn't it recording? There we go. All right. In three, two, one. IBM calls this a personal computer and says a person can afford it, yet it's over $1,500. Apple says computing is a revolution that can't be missed, but at $1,530, you could miss it. Atari says computers are now within reach. Well, the Commodore 64 has more built-in memory than the others, and it's under $600. So, while everyone else talks about the revolution that's coming, you can experience the revolution that's here. You could miss it. You could miss it. You could miss it. Eh, you could miss it. <laughs> Hello, greetings, and welcome to Play Retro. I am your host, Scott Johnson, and I'd like to go to line four and ask how hard is your hat, Mac? <laughs> and I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway, and I say let them load quoted star comma eight comma one return run return and wait three minutes before gaming. You so basic two o. Oh man, so basic. Why are you so yeah. basic? Why are you so basic two o? Yeah, what's Come up on. with that? Why are you so basic? Uh, today's big discussion, of course, Commodore sixty four, and what we think are the definitive list of top games. They're going to have some differing opinions out there. We are excited to hear your thoughts on what you liked or didn't like. But we've got quite the lineup today. Before we get to all of that, a couple quick things. Uh, I had a question for you. What was the oh, last... We, we were playing a lot of retro games lately, obviously for the show, every week, filled with it. You're streaming them at night, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and it got me to thinking... Know your day-to-day -day life, whatever. It got me to thinking, when is the last... What is the last retro title that you started yeah. and finished? Like... Oh my. from the beginning all the way to the end whatever the end is credits whatever done what was it do you remember wow um yeah i'm thinking really hard i cannot think of anything i was trying to think of something like uh like pac-man mm. <laughs> i went yeah. as far as you can go as far as you can go. ever went in pac-man um yeah i can't think of anything because a lot of our retro games um, don't necessarily, if they're not story driven, like I didn't finish, uh, uh, the, uh, a uh, soul reaver, which I'm, I'm still wanting to do. Oh yeah. You told me uh, you were going to try to, to beat that. Thing, yeah, but, yeah. I'm still, I still want to, but it's just, it just seems like, uh, it seems like retro games keep coming. They yeah. It's almost stop. as bad as modern gaming. There's just something new all the time, but I will now yeah. be able to tell and announce to the world. I beat a retro game last Ooh, week. What'd you be what? I finished drill dozer on the game boy advance. Oh, look at on the Game Boy. So did you do that through emulation on the Steam or did all you do emulation. it on all emulation? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's a game I didn't even know existed until recently and uh, was late. Um, I think I talked about it on the show a little bit, but it was a late yeah. uh, to the generation game that came out of nowhere. Nintendo published it and it was made by the folks who made, I think, most of the mainline Pokemon games. Right. Um, anyway, it is fantastic, top to bottom. Gets kind of difficult toward the end, but in a good way. And uh, I loved Drill Dozer. So look it up, <laughs> check it out. Drill Dozer was rad. If you want to, if you want a game that'll keep you totally hooked and you'll finish. Right. That might be the Plus one. It's got, it's got the best name, and they. It is so great that even Deep Rock Galactic used it as the name of their uh, one of their little dozers. Yeah, the drill, drill dozer, dozer, the drill dozer. Yeah. Uh, it's rock and stone. I freaking love those guys. Stone. That's a so great good. Video game. Yeah. It's I amazing. can't wait for that to become retro so we can talk about it. You know what? You know that game's good on <laughs> the, the Steam Deck. Plays that game real good. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. No, get out of here. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, real well, like perfectly well, like 
I like it as good as anything I played on a computer. I'm playing it on my Steam Deck. It's well, fantastic. Certified yeah. functionality works wonderfully. Multiplayer, voiceover, all of it. It's all good. Bim bam boom. Uh, but that's also where I played Dildo 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 yeah. It's definitely going to be a dildozer. Dildozer. I'm going to start calling people yeah. that. You dildozer. Get away from me, dildozer. You dildozer. It's a pretty Stop good name. Stop dildozing me. It's a pretty good name. It sounds <laughs> you know it's, yeah. Beavisy you and know butt kind of a little bit. It's, it's definitely a name of a adult product. You know it's got to be. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. Nobody do that. But Drilldozer on GBA, available nowhere <laughs> unless you uh, emulate it. And I loved <laughs> it, and I beat it, and I felt good about it. Uh, so go check that out. Hey, Brian, speaking of old games, the Atari 600 XL. I wonder what that has to do with your life this week. Hmm. Oh, hi. So uh, one of our wonderful listeners, Matt, sent me in very short order after talking recently about my experience with my Commodore 64 and my C16 failing on me, oh, yeah. uh, made a very generous offer of sending me their childhood Atari 600 XL. Oh. And I am holding it right now. It came very fast. I appreciate it so much, Matt. And I can't wait to fire this guy up. I don't know if you ever saw one of these back in the days, but it's it's, it's basically well, it's it runs basic. It runs it runs just like you would expect. Well, wait, what, what goes in the cartridge hole? Twenty six hundred games or no, what? You got you got you know, That's what I used to think. And this is what's so great about actually holding this hardware in your hands because I've seen pictures of this plenty of times before. But if you look at the carts, they're little tiny mini carts. They're they're smaller, yeah, much smaller than the twenty six hundred. That's carts. about the size it, of a the, not so thickness cute. but height and width. That's about the same size as a Game Gear game. It's pretty good. Pretty right, small. it's uh, yeah, yeah. Game Gear, it's, it's a, probably a little thicker than a Game Gear game, but it's you're, you're not wrong. It's it's kind of in that in that area. But I got River Raid, I got the Frogger. Look how cute this Frogger is. It looks like the bigger one, but it's a little tiny frog. Yeah, a little it's Frogger right up here in the cart. You got a little Frogger there, <laughs> and I could, like I said, I couldn't be more excited about this. Also, it comes with the pilot programming language, which yeah. I'm pretty excited about uh, doing. I don't know if you know, but back in the day, I used to love uh, where I got my programming start, and kind of what I still do uh, today is my day job, is I do programming, and part of that was uh, thanks to learning basic. Thanks a lot, Bill Gates, uh, from uh, the Commodore 64 in machines like these. Look at this. I got a Zaxxon, too. Look at that. Ooh, see? Is that look, not sexy? So, look, there's a Game Gear game, about the same size. Not thick. It's obviously thinner. Right. But look yeah, at that. Obviously, yeah, but it's about the same size. About You're right. It's not far off. Yeah. Now, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh. Continue. I was going to say, he also sent, uh, Matt also sent me this little tape drives here. I'm very <laughs> excited about hitting load in, in my basic command line and then waiting uh, and then pressing play. Or actually, you press play first, right? Or you do, I can't remember which the, which the, which way it goes. I don't remember but you either. Gotta, yeah, it's a long time. Oh, ago. yeah, but you got you to gotta, you gotta load it up from the screen and uh, you hit play on the tape recorder and it starts, uh, it starts your little loading game. If you've ever pulled one of those tapes into, uh, if you're pulling those tapes into um, a, a, a like a pl tape player, is is like uh, what actually like happens? You just get a bunch man. of weird sounds. Is that what happens? Yeah. That was like that's how the PlayStation it disc sounds worked. Like, it sounds like data. Yeah, it is data. Literally data. That's how that's how track one on all the PlayStation one discs right. worked in your car. It was track one would just make horrible static noise. It was great. Yep. It's fantastic. It also comes. He also sent some uh, some nice little uh, uh, magazines and books and stuff. I get to be an Atari 400, 800, 600 student pilot. I'm pretty <laughs> excited about all what this. Is the, old who did stuff, the art man. on that thing? What cover is that? I That's don't know. It's very horrible. much. It, it very much reminds me of uh, somebody. It, I, I couldn't figure out. It reminds me of Sesame Street stuff. And I don't know if they actually credited uh, the individual. But here inside, you get more of the same guy's artwork. And I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's, 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 looks it's pretty sweet. It looks bad. I like it. Bad like in a good way. Bad a, in a good way. Yeah. I like it's a pilot and I guess you're the turtle learning how to learn stuff. Thanks <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah. You're Thanks a turtle. A lot, Atari. You're like a little turtle shell po or turtle head poking out. That's what you are. Oh, and by the way, if you've ever been curious what happens when we get donations, first of all, thank you guys, everybody who donated, uh, you know, equipment to the, uh, play retro, uh, a museum of sorts. I always, when I get these things, I clean them up real quick, mm -hmm. and then I stick them in these nice little containers to keep any moisture and stuff off of them. Uh, and I usually just pick these up. These little stir lights. I think this is like a thirty-two quart. I usually like to put something this big uh, in these larger boxes. Yeah, they keep cheap. them all safe really and cheap. dry. And uh, so, 
You just get those at Walmart, right? Though. Buy a whole stack of 10 of them at Walmart for like yeah, you, 12 bucks yeah. or something. Yeah. I, you can get a Walmart. Amazon's a little more expensive for some reason. I don't know if Sterilite has like a, a major deal with them. There's probably other brands too, but I've just I found good lids and I like the fact that they're clear so I can see what's in them so I can quickly uh, get to them. So yeah, that's awesome. Catalog it. Nice. Yes. That's how you should do oh, it. Take oh. care of your stuff. Yes. I didn't mention also Matt was nice enough. Also has been listening. Obviously been listening. Thank you, Matt. Uh, sent me a Raspberry Pi 4. Oh, a Raspberry Pi 4. What are you going to yeah, do with that? You're going gonna to load that up and go for the, some kind of retro pie business or what? what are you I do? am. I have an old retro pie 3. Um, but this new one, I'm going to be able to put in uh, my new case that I've been trying. I've been looking desperately for Raspberry Pi 4. Now I have it for my case. It is a... Uh, Famicom lookalike, so it looks like uh, looks like a little Famicom mini, and I'm gonna probably load up some Famicom games on it. So I'm pretty the chip shortage is looking good, uh, way more. It's, in fact, there might be a glut coming, so I think those yeah. those fours are gonna be a little more easy to get coming in the next few months. Whew, so watch for I don't that. know. There's such a backlog because I was looking and I was I've, I have my name on the list for I think I've been on the list for about maybe eight months or so because I yeah. started looking at the. It's coming. Maybe though. it was even longer than that. It's so I started looking at the end of last year. So you'll you'll get it. The um, the all of the major chip manufacturers yeah. are like, oh, slow down. We got a glut coming. Everybody ch- chill for a second. Yeah. We know we were at a shortage, but now we're gonna have a glut, so don't make so many. I'm so we'll feeling see. pretty good about my two pre-orders. I ordered I had uh I ordered the uh Genesis Mini 2, which is the Mega Drive 2. You get the uh, Japanese one from, though, right? I ordered the one from the Japanese Amazon store. I pre-ordered it, and I also yeah. ordered one when they the released uh, the Japanese. All the all the Sega Genesis are being uh, manufactured in Japan and being shipped from Japan. So uh, I ordered it from the American store as well, Amazon, but it is coming from Japan as well. But it will be branded a little bit differently, so I'm going to get both of those. And uh, I'm glad I did pre-order them because there's been recent talk about uh, it really being in limited supply which we kind of suspected but yeah it's official now so 104 we'll sorry 105 uh, 23 is what you're gonna pay here for this yeah i think i paid well the i think i paid 120 something after shipping from the uh amazon store and i think i paid just about that on the um on the u.s store free shipping but it was a little higher so yeah wow if you want it on november 1st you're gonna pay 21 extra bucks I think that's what I paid because I wanted it as quick as I could get it. Oh, man. I need to put this on my... At the very least, I need to get it on my freaking uh, wish list. Things are yeah. a little tight at the moment, so I can't buy it yes. right out. But I'm going to hit wish well, list. Well, if you pre-order from Amazon, you don't pay for it until it ships. I mean, of course, that's also got to consider, will you have the money then? I don't know. Yeah. But well, you, I'll uh, have it. Yeah. It's just a matter of priorities. I got to figure it out. Yeah. I don't know yeah. yet. Well, I, I mean, do want it, though. When I say have the money, I mean your play retro budget money. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. we do. That's how we buy all this stuff is from our patron supporters and people who send us stuff. So yeah, that's, that's how, that's that's how we that afford happens. it. Uh, the six-button yeah. controller is something I really want on that thing, so I'm very excited about that. Oh, yeah. Super excited. Uh, well, anyway, a lot going on, but it's time for us to dig deep into C64 territory, and we do that by starting with this. Shall we play a game? Sure, why not? Why don't we play a few games? So there's a gigantic library of games for the Commodore 64. It's kind of uh, unending, this list. It's huge. Yes. And there's a huge bunch of garbage games for it. Terrible, awful, buy it on a five and a quarter inch floppy garbage poo-poo game. Those exist (laughs) in large (laughs) amounts, okay? That's how it was back then. If you had an Apple II, Apple IIe, you had a Commodore, you had early Amiga, you had you know Atari uh, stuff. There were a lot of trash, garbage, poo poo games in the early yeah, early that, days. And that helped. That helped the video game crash that came uh, pretty early on. I mean, after I mean, when you think about forty years of Commodore sixty four, it was in uh, nineteen eighty two when it started. And by the time we were in 1984, we were already seeing, you know, pretty much the crash. So yeah, yeah the, the the glut of games that yeah, we that were was. we were there, uh, and yeah. there was there was no getting around, you know, the glut. The Quality glut happened. Control. Yeah, the the glut happened, but also good stuff happened. Things happened. Games were made, and we went, oh, okay, this is cool. I'll think fondly on this in 38 years. However, what's it been? 40. <laughs> 40 years, my friend. Shit. 2022 came out in 1982. That's crazy. That's just I know. I love me. it. How was that 40 years ago? 
Seriously. It's mid. It's mid. The, uh, the Commodore 64 is now middle aged. It is like only. It. it is. It has hit the hill and it is heading down, yeah. baby. It's got weird aches. It can't explain. It doesn't know what to do <laughs> about any of this. Uh, yeah. So the Commodore 64 was a big deal at the time. These are our top picks that we're going to talk about today. All right. Yeah. Not your top picks. I've heard from plenty of people. It, I and I want to hear after the show too. Play retro show at gmail.com or just hit us up on Twitter. Play retro show. We, we definitely want to hear your top picks. It's not going to be the last time we're going to... This is not the definitive Commodore 64 top five pick of all time. This is our top pick. Yeah. And I, w- I want to hear yours. Yes. And now, so every, everybody and their dog said, you got to have Turrican on here. And they're right. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You need Turrican on here. Uh, I really like Turrican. I think Turrican's awesome. My only problem with Turrican is... It's hard to play it now. <laughs> it's it's balls hard then and is still balls hard now. Yeah, really hard, but not just balls hard. Like balls are falling off and are, you know, corroding hard. It's hard. And it also right. just like some so, of the like scrolling technology they were using at the time to have the screen scroll, which at the time, very impressive. Uh, today right. just feels blah, wonky. It's hard yeah. to explain. Well, this is we're talking about 8 bit computing. And this was 1990 when Turrican came out. Uh, it was a Contra meets Gunstar Hero kind of hard, where you're running and gunning, side scrolling, and uh, trying to avoid many, many enemies. And it's very floaty. But it, for you know, it's kind of like it's, you're supposed to be in in space or in like a planet with different gravity, so you can kind of like spell it away. Kind of go, oh, it's okay. Mm. You know, it's just different gravity. But I'm with you. It's very floaty, mm-hmm. and there's a little bit of uh, there's a lot, not just a little bit. You know, uh, Nintendo discovered early on they're like, oh, with the 3D stuff that we're doing. When they got to the N64, mm-hmm. they started cheating mm-hmm. for the user because to try to jump from one point to the next, mm-hmm. people are failing a lot when you use real physics. So they had to like kind of go, okay, close enough, we'll pull you over. Yeah. This does the same thing. It will uh, if you get close enough to an edge of something, it'll pull you over. And yeah, so it makes cheat. it feel real floaty and inconsistent. Uh, yeah, it just feels like to me. I, I played a bunch of this this week, and but, it fe- and it just felt like I don't know. I felt like I was playing in changing gravity, not low gravity, yeah, but gravity yeah, that yeah. was constantly fluctuating, that's, and it drove me nuts. That's the pulling. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the pulling. pulling effect that's happening. That's trying to uh, get you to because the platform, the platforming is 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 pretty brutal in itself. Uh, but it's not meant to be the part that's hard. The part that's hard is the ongoing onslaught of enemies who are coming at you um, and the, and just the damage they can create. Uh, but yeah, I, I can totally see that. But once I got into the groove and set myself back to it, because Turrican's one of those games where you got to, the, the, if you can get through 15 minutes of it, you'll adjust, you'll acclimate. And then you'll start having fun. But yeah, picking it up right away, even back in the day, it was the same thing. I mean, a lot of players would pick it up and go, mm, no, mm, mm, no. Mm, well, you no, know what converted it. a lot of people right away is this. Listen to this amazing intro. Check this out. Hello and welcome to Turrican. Be my guest. Another day, another try. But remember, shoot or die. <laughs> I mean, that's that's... That's just oh. epic and awesome. Look, right? listen to the Sid chip in that Commodore 64. That was even even the gameplay. Listen, yeah, it's. I mean, it's so much. There, there was so much going on here that I would say, I don't know, it made consoles sound like garbage. Like it was really it advanced. Did. Yeah, the it was it's super advanced. You got to remember, this is the same chip that was in from you know day one shipping. This wasn't like in 1999, like 1990, you got like an upgrade or something. This was hardware that was there from the beginning. It's called the SID chip, and it was designed uh, by it was designed to sound more like um, uh, like uh, uh, keyboards. You know, it, it was it was musical in design. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like can we make some beeps and boops. They wanted something that sounded like a synthesizer. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, they did, and they did it early, and it hung around forever, and it still rivaled yeah. other stuff on the market that came out way later. Uh, it was amazing. Like I, you know, like the Genesis chip had no right to be as shitty sounding as it was. <laughs> they, they had time. <laughs> it really is not good. No, it's bad. They could have really. I don't know. This thing. Uh, this thing just proved a lot. And at the time, I remember them saying, "Well, it's because it's a computer. It's much more hardware than a." 
than your average, uh, uh, yeah. you know, console the size of a handheld or whatever. But when you introduce your game, the very first effing thing you hear is this. Hello. That guy going, bruh, get yeah. my freaking shooter die, bruh. I mean, it made my day. Dude. This is that. 1990 when this came out, and most of us were probably running our Commodore 64s on our TVs. And this is the CRT era, and it was near the end of the CRT era. CRT era and uh, well, not really, near. not really. It was, it was at the height. It was probably the it, height. The yeah, height that's of it. fair. Yeah. And so you had some of the best speakers in these big boxes because they just they just sounded so good. Yeah. And so, man, it, 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 yeah, you put those two things together, I mean, you were blowing people's pants off. Yeah. What would you think of the the weird little um, laser weapon that was almost impossible to control? <laughs> the, right. The, okay, so you got your power-ups in, in Turrican. That's yeah. that's a huge big up for this game. Yeah. Uh, and so you have to know how to how to... You have to know how to get everything working, and one of the things you do, you got like a, you got a, a, a pistol, a laser that you just can shoot. But if you hold it down long enough, you get this Castlevania style whip thing. Mm -hmm. you, know, you remember, remember the whip oh, in yeah. Castlevania? And how oh, it, yeah. it, I forget which one it was, but the uh, whichever one it is that you can whip the, you can whip it around and stuff. You kind of get that effect where you can like you can circle around yourself I with like that a was clock the hand. The third, just, not third one. What was it called? The sequel. It, uh, what's his name's? Simon's Quest. I think that had Castlevania a Four. I knew Tonda Gosa would know. Tonda Did he know? Like Castlevania. Okay. Well, yeah, Four Tonda, was Tonda a su no. It was called Super Cal. Ah, shit. Where did that end up? Where was that game? I don't That's remember. a good question. I don't remember. But I'll tell you what. Let me tell you what I did do. This tell is how what. I played this game. Yeah. This week. Oh. I played it with my Commodore sixty four Mini. Uh, the, the controller that came with it, which was, you know, it was a fairly popular uh, controller style back in the day when the Commodore 64 was, was out. I didn't play very much Turrican back in the day. Once again, I was not into hardcore games. I wasn't into that kind of thing uh, back then, except at the arcade. I liked I liked my physicality of the games at the arcade, but when I was at home, I just wanted to chill out. Mm. And so this was not one that I played very much of. I was aware of it, but I didn't play very much of it. So uh, but, side, side note, my dad, like you said, you had a Commodore 64. In my household, we had yeah. an Apple IIe. Those are kind of your two big choices for home computers yes. at the time, or a couple of them anyway that were popular. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that version of or that device had a lot of great games on it, many of which were also on the Commodore, but the versions on the oh, 64 yeah. were so much cooler, sounded so much better. <laughs> Like it was just superior hardware in every way yeah. for games anyway. But here's the other problem. Right. It wouldn't have mattered if I had a C64 because my dad was weird about it. He, he would say, well, okay, we're buying these joysticks, but don't use them. They'll wear them out. I'm like, well, dad, <laughs> no, that's hilarious. Why, why get it. joysticks if we're just going to wear them out? Well, that's how, you know, don't use that computer too much either. You're just going to wear that com or that uh, keyboard. <laughs> don't wear that keyboard out. Like dad, you have to use the keyboard to type stuff. I know, but don't use it too much. Like, do you, use it too much. Stop hitting the key how, so hard. How much is a replacement keyboard? Was it four thousand dollars or something? Because my gosh, he was so cheap about it. it. Drove us crazy. So it wouldn't I have been good. I get it though. I get it, and you'll you'll know why. Especially if if you I don't. Did he allow you to get any of the uh, the epics games uh, later on? Like oh my god, those were those were murder on, on joysticks and surprised if you could ever if you could even look at those oh, because they remember. were murder. This wasn't remember, too bad. Turkey I just remember wasn't him. Too bad he was worried the that the paddles that we were going to ruin the paddles and that we were going right. to wreck the keyboards because those were your two main inputs. And so we barely right, played. Right. Or if I played games, is when he's out of town or something. It's like oh, dad's not here. Sweet, I'm going to play until my hands go numb. And who cares what happens? And I'll just explain it when he gets home. If something breaks. Right. And nothing ever broke. It was all fine. Yeah. He was just cheap. Now, Manfred, Manfred Trends, who is the guy who did this Turrican, uh, started out on programming in BASIC, and then he learned assembly language, and he started making a lot of really cool games, mostly ripoffs, just like everybody was doing in the early 80s, mm -hmm. of other games. And then uh, he slowly started finding his own way. And I think that really culminated here into the uh to the turk and in the turk turk in a lot while. of ways you know for for people that had consoles maybe an nes or something uh yeah. i guess that had been a year later though what like yeah, I'm trying it to wasn't too much longer they it came out for the 64 first i believe and then it was shortly thereafter went to you know the yeah Apple but i didn't I but didn't he consoles. play or didn't sorry not he uh didn't when did Mega Man first hit what year was it? Me the original oh, Mega Man. Mega Man. Because a lot of ways, uh, Turrican is basically a Mega Man game in a lot of ways. 
when was it? We, we just we just did Mega remember. Man recently. It's not like it was like later in the eighties than we thought. Yeah, so maybe Turrican was ahead of everybody else instead of the opposite thing you usually think of. You know, maybe it was Turrican. Yeah, it definitely first. it borrowed from other games like Gunstar Heroes, and you know, yeah, but Contra Gunstar and, and, Gunstar Heroes didn't happen until Genesis like ninety six or something. That's that's. Oh, a, was it that oh, late? Yeah. Oh wow, okay, then maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, that's what I'm saying. I yeah. think Turrican sh should get more credit. I think maybe in a lot I think of ways it, do. it started it all. You know. If you want to, if you want to fight, man, let me tell you something about the Commodore sixty four era. Everybody thinks that the, you know, the Sega Genesis versus, you know, the the Super Nintendo and all that stuff was the where the battle was all that. But early early eighties, mid eighties, mm -hmm. it was a lot of fighting about uh, the Commodore sixty four games, the Apple games, and specifically like you know stuff like you either loved Turrican or you were not really into that. And uh, oh yeah, I. The, They'll fight you. Well, they'll Somebody fight. Will no, fight no, you they'll if you cut say you. Turrican they'll sucks. fight you and cut you. Uh, Turrican right. is a, is beloved. <laughs> now, I'd like to tell you fine folks about a game that sounds a little like this. Give it a sec. It gets going. Here we go. Oh, I love it. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's a little game called International Karate. <laughs> yes, and this is not inter international. It's not IK plus, even no. though that's what most people love the most. I played more of international karate, so that's the reason why it made it on the list. I remember it, and I remember it yeah. thinking this is my friend's house. He had a C sixty four, and I remember seeing this game and going, "Are you kidding me? This is amazing! Yeah. Like, what the crap? Look at these fighters. There's so much animation. They're kicking the shit out of each other. It also was like skill based and not button mashy. So you had to time mm -hmm. your kicks and your punches and your blocks." And uh, you jump around these different locations, have a tournament right out in front of the Statue of Liberty for some reason. Uh, the tin Twin Towers are back there still. You can see those. Yeah. Um, but but this like amazing tactical fighter, uh, this was a huge hit for a lot of people. Yeah. And it was like, hey, Capcom in the arcades, F off. We got this. <laughs> yeah, got I this. know. Now, they, they, they got a little bit of crap. Uh, they got accused of being a karate champ ripoff. Yeah, yeah I could see it. But... Sure. It was, you know, it was decided that, yeah, you don't own karate. You no. can't just, you know, uh, the, the karate matches and, you know, giving points to uh, karate, you know, you can't you can't trademark that. You can trademark a name. Uh, you can trademark certain technologies, but you can't trademark a sport like no, that. No, unless it was like straight up code ripoff. I don't think you can make the argument. No. Like no. back then, though, this is Wild West. Nobody knew what to say about who copied what or who inspired what you know video no. games now they use all kinds of uh, uh mechanics and stuff from different games and once in a while you have a weird thing like um the shadow of mordor game had that oh, nemesis yeah. system in it and they copyrighted that or trademarked it yeah. and that's why you don't see it anywhere because it's in legal mush town trying to get your game right. made with something that's even remotely I like it people get away with it but you have to I'm be surprised careful. Surprised they could do it. It's very generalized with the Nemesis system. Basically, what you're saying it's this, it's an old story trope. I mean, yeah. There's a there's a revenge. I mean, it, come to on. Me, I mean, to me, I don't think you should be able to do it. I think it's like movies. Like even yeah. with movie names, they don't let you do it. There's 15 movies called Traffic. <laughs> Why yeah. or Crash? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, because if you copyrighted Crash, no one could ever use it again. You severely limit the creativity. I think yeah. video games have slowly gotten to the place where that's also still true it's just that with code because it's so uh, what's the word it's permanent and kind of doesn't vary yeah. or degrade it's code right right so right. you so people feel like well no we should copy or we should lock that down as if it's ours because it's code but right. i think we're finally getting to the place where video games are just more fluid and you know systems in yeah. terms of gameplay yeah. you know they don't need to worry about that shit just yeah, I think artistic, you know, there, there's 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 mechanical parts of a program and then there's artistic parts and artistic expression. And artistic expression is usually a reflection of culture and it's in all of us. And so uh, as long as you're not like directly copying a character specifically, then, you know, I think, you know, defining human nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, you can't copyright that or how people play karate and mm -hmm. international karate. I love the crap out of it because it was the most satisfying game you could play because there wasn't like, it wasn't like what we got from Mortal Kombat and games later on where it's like, you got a bunch of punches, you know, and you got to, you got to do all this other stuff. But instead you would, you would just land the perfect punch. Yeah. And I love yeah. land. It was so satisfying to flip over your opponent 
And then once you figured it out, the timing, turn around and punch him in the back of the head. Yeah. And you'd get, you know, X number of points. And that was, it was just the most satisfying feeling. But I was really jealous because I had international karate, but my friend had an apple too, and he had karateka. Yeah, karateka was the and bomb, dude. That game rocked. It, that was an amazing game. Uh, I, I can't, what, what's the developer's name? Did Prince of Persia? Don't well, remember. But, he, but it's oh my amazing. God. The, the animations on that thing, yeah. the mood, I loved it. I even loved the momentum of it because when you would walk, and you would uh, you would you would try to stop. It would like keep going for a minute or two. Like mm -hmm. it, like I'm not a minute or two, but like I, like so many sure. seconds or whatever. Sure. And uh, but it was so good. But I had international karate, and I'm like, suck it. Come over and play some arcading. Jordan Mechner says the chat. Is that right, Jordan Mechner? That's it. That sounds right, Jordan Mechner. Uh, real right. quick, there's I was just listening to an interview about this. The the Jordan Mechner uh, legacy sort of continues on because you had Karataka, then Prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then eventually Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, and the kind of newer take on Prince of Persia. Yeah. And then you get the entire Assassin's Creed series as basically yeah. a spiritual successor to that. That's what it all came out of. So still to this day, those primordial bits are in yeah. uh, modern games, and I love that. Really Magner great. needs his own episode. There's a couple of developers that I've been learning more and more about. We're going to talk about David Crane again a little bit, and I'm telling you, man, we, we may have to get to a point where we had to have a whole episode about just certain developers and how they changed everything. Well, who made... Uh, oh, what's, this, what's the name of the damn game Brian loves so much? Dunaway. Hold on. Ibbets? Me? Ibbet, oh. Ibbets. Uh, Tem Tempest. Oh, he loves... Tempest. Uh, the dude, oh, the, Tempest. dude yeah. what made Tempest is like a lord in gaming yes. circles. Um I can't think of his freaking name. Hold on. Uh, Lord Featherbottom. <sighs> this isn't it. <laughs> is this it isn't Jeff it. Minter? No. Yes, Jeff Minter. We got to talk about that guy. We got to have a whole episode about Minter. Hey, Wraith. Yes, yes. We're that... going to do that. We're going to get to full. Maybe we should do some uh, some extra little smaller episodes where we talk about. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I've been. I've The deeper I dig into retro, the more times I run across the same names over and over again. I'm like, Dern. I thought I was just a fan of you know these particular games. I'm actually a fan of this particular developer, and I never really knew it. Yeah. And, and by the way, uh, I was wrong so, about the dev. It's Dave Thur Thurier, but uh, Dave Thurier. Minter did like Thurier. stuff later, like 2000 right. he made and some other stuff. Anyway, yeah, we got to do that. We got to look at some of these rock stars of early gaming. They got no credit while they rock were doing stars. it, though. At the time, they yeah. were like left off the box, got paid shit. <laughs> <laughs> Made the whole game. It's just such a different world now. They're rock stars now, these game devs. Yeah, they are. They're not all named Rockstar, but yeah, they're all, yeah, they're rock stars. They're like rock that. stars who sometimes publish games at Rockstar. Um, all right, I check really, this out. I really dug deep into System 3, by the way. I don't, I don't want to hold up too long on the international karate, but I really dug deep into System 3. They still exist. They did international karate. Their first gig that they did that when they announced this is pretty interesting story. I'll have to what, talk about that sometime. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love digging deeper into yeah. that early corporate -y business. Um, yes. All right, next game on our list is like a little game I played this week that I thought I was going to like because I just love the idea of it. <laughs> and boy, howdy, does it is it hard to play. But it's called Impossible Mission from 1984, and it sounds like this. Oh. Stay a while. Oh. Stay oh. forever. Oh, that's familiar, isn't it? That sounds very familiar. Yeah, so that's the audio originally used by Rob Gobers when he made the theme for... Our now defunct game show, um, which Final one was score. it? Final score. I could never remember what the right. damn name is. Uh, Final score, but we also used it on the Boop Show for uh, the longest Correct. time. And I never knew the origin of that original clip until I played this game. So that was a nice surprise. Yeah. More um, I, great speech synthesis. Speech synthesis. Yeah. Boy, that's a tough one for me to come up with. I just uh, love him doing this. Chip, this yep. bit right here. That. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> It's great. I love when he. I love when he eternal falls. When he. I don't know if you if you uh, experienced any of his falls, but it's just like. Ah! Oh yeah, he falls for like shoot. I didn't record any though. I should have. That would have been great. <laughs> uh, but the game is uh, basically a little spy dude, and uh, you run into these. The map actually reminded me of a Metroidvania, weirdly. But you run yeah. into these office yeah. buildings and or these offices, and they different floors, little elevators to get you places. Uh, you're you're kind of rotos rotoscope animated. I shouldn't say kind of. You are. It, yeah, he looks like. Yeah, he's been. Uh, they, they studied. I don't actually think they rotoscoped it, believe it or not. I think they actually animated it based off real animation books. Oh, but wow. I don't know if they actually rotoscoped them or not. But it's 
That's impressive. He, I love when he flips. The flipping is the absolute. Oh, the flipping best. is the best. Yeah, it's a little unrealistic in terms of how he lands and stuff. But you got to avoid these robots who are trying to zap you and kill you. And while they're busy trying to zap you and kill you, you need to try to occasionally grab a computer or a bookshelf or whatever it is and take the shit that's on it. And yeah. the search bar that you use it retains how much you got done the last time you tried. So if you had a yeah, really hard yeah. time doing it because the robot zapper came to get you, you can go back and you know avoid him for a minute and go back and it will pick up in the progress that you were before. I found right. this game effing hard to play really hard like just not hard difficulty hard awkward just blah just felt like i was barely moving is weird I yeah did, i didn't enjoy this it. is another one of those games where uh if, if you can play it for 15 minutes and become acclimated to the physics of it yeah it becomes more sensical and you start figuring stuff out with this game has random uh, it loads up random uh, randomly i do the, like that the different yeah. yeah i like that so you got it's always a new fresh take every time you get killed enough times and you start over again yeah and then like you said you got to search the different computers what you're, you're trying to do is you're try, trying to stop elvin atom bender uh from uh, blowing up the world he's been you know he's been breaking into hacking the computer so you've hacked into his lair and you're trying to search through uh, through his stuff to get passwords and uh, and pieces of puzzles that you'll eventually have to put together, uh, which is a pain in the butt. I don't know if you didn't make it that far. It's almost an impossible mission at that point. Then when you start getting to the puzzle solving part, that's when you realize, oh, this is an impossible mission. Yeah. Um, uh, also, we we're but, not we're not glossing over the fact that they literally named it <laughs> impossible mission instead of mission yeah, impossible. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's oh okay. Look, they're doing it here. I think they're they, those. It's one of the puzzles. It's a memory yeah, game, um, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, match, it's a memory game. It's a match so, game or whatever. It's stupid. You do. I, I do like the. the I, I tried to think. I'm like, was this the first time I had experienced a game that had a interruptible event? So I actually had to, you know, it wasn't all action. You know, you, you had to jump around, jump over robots and stuff. We were trying to zap you and kill you. You can't touch them. Uh, but when you get to the to the you know to the desk or anything, you, you got to stop and you got to search. And there's a there's a there's you know you got you got to avoid the robots. But here they come and you're trying to search at the same time. Mm -hmm. and those robots stop, but then they can they can also blast you. But um, yeah, I was I was trying to think if that was the first time I experienced that game mechanic or not. Well, it is. It's not. I don't know when. I, the first time I played it was this week, so I, I feel like right. I I can't say. But <laughs> but I've played right. lots of things since then. And looking at how old this is, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, yeah. The fact that it's you, uh, also featured uh, random levels that was huge back then. There's no way, yeah. You know, there's yeah. no way that was may, may not have been the first, but it was it was early. It felt like a continuation of what we saw with Robotron, right? I yeah, mean, a you're still bit. facing robots. You got a little randomization, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, I, yeah. I I really liked it. But I respect again, it. I respect it. I don't know if I like that's it. maybe that's what I should say too. Mm. I respect it because I doubt I'll be going back to play it anytime soon. Um, I, I don't know if there's any speed running involved with this one or not, but, uh, yeah, impossible mission, pretty interesting stuff. The best parts though, you need to read the manual. You need to read, you need to go back and read that because it goes deeper into, it mostly goes into our, our, uh, our bad guy, mm -hmm. uh, Elvin Adam Bender. And it talks about why he's doing this. Yep. And uh, it gets really interesting. So, so like one of the things he, he one of the things that kicks him off is when he was younger, he became obsessed with a computer game called Giggling Penguin Invaders from <laughs> Outer Space in the yep. vicinity of Ulcer Minor. Yeah, uh, Elvin had always hated penguins from Ulcer Ulc 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 Minor. Uh, it's in the script, man. It's in the script. Yep, uh, I like that so though. Anyway, extended game, lore. You these days you go to Wikipedia for this stuff. Back in the day, they put it in the manual pretty cool right right yeah. but the game in that in that fictitious game the game score counter went up to 100 billion and elvin was <laughs> determined to max it out yeah. after playing the game for several days without sleep he had vaporized enough penguins to pile up 999 million 990 anyway a lot of points yep one more tuxedo avian and he'd have it elvin shook out his joystick hand a 250 point penguin walked waddled onto the screen elvin's eyes, eyes lit up he took aim and something he just missed, no! and so it, then he lost his mind. I would have lost my mind. Yeah, that precise moment, the power failed. The power failed, man, and so he wasn't able to shoot that last penguin. So he lost his mind. <laughs> you know how many of us haven't been there? You know what I mean? Right. We've all right. been there. Um, all right. Who hasn't? It's a cool game. Next on our list is EA's attempt to rip off Nintendo. 
<laughs> yes, that's right. A very early Electronic Arts made a game. The first EA the, game, right? Yeah, I don't know if it was the first. Was it the first? I didn't know that. Yeah, the, it was one of the first five, and I think it was the most successful, so they always call it the first. Oh, interesting. Well, here's some sound. Oh, my Lord. I'm dead. Yeah, my ears, my ears are broken. Now, if you're hearing this and thinking, boy, it sounds like Donkey Kong. And if you saw it, if you're in the chat room and you're watching, you're like, oh, this looks a lot like Donkey Kong. That's because it is a lot like Donkey Kong, and they kind of stole the concept. They, uh, yeah, they aped this idea from Nintendo, right? I mean, it's not Donkey Kong in the fact that you're trying to rescue a princess. Right. Or whatever she is. It's not even a princess, right? It's Miss Miss Pink Bottoms. Miss, uh, Miss Pink anyway, Bottoms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, your, your hard hat... Mac and you're working on a construction site and your the your opponents are essentially OSHA and slackers, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, and OSHA you gotta, you and gotta, slackers. You gotta gird the girders. <laughs> That's about right. Some of the levels require you to collect things. Some of them require you to uh, basically fasten uh, metal beams, <coughs> and um, all of them are very like, oh, here's a conveyor belt, and here's a, a lift, and here's a weird piece of machinery, and. Right. Try not to die and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it was, I thought was the coolest freaking thing. And I played this on my Apple is where I played it, uh, the Apple tube when I was a kid. Um, but like Brian said, this was on the C64. It showed up in other places. This was never a big mainstream thing because again, if you were going to put this say on a console, Nintendo would have sued you. Like they did many times. I was surprised that they did not. Were they working with EA or something at I that don't point know. in time? I, I need I to know, know the history of it because, okay, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, but it made sense. It makes it. it un, I understand the inspiration. They didn't just make a monkey here, but they did go, oh, you know what's kind of cool? That girder structure that was in Donkey Kong really wasn't necessary for Donkey Kong. But hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was a construction guy there? Which, I mean, at this point, we didn't know Mario was a plumber, right? We just thought he was a construction guy. Yeah, we didn't right? know. I we mean, didn't know anything about him. He was called yeah. Jumpman. Didn't even have a name yeah, yet. Yeah, Jumpman. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, I'm like, yeah, they, they took a lot of inspiration, but I don't know if, I don't know if you could. I even I look at it now, proper. and I get excited yeah. because this seemed like magic to me. I, I can't explain yeah. it. The, you know how some old games, you just remember them? from right. your childhood and something about them is just like this this represents such a important time for me to go to all the wow factor i was getting out of computers i was like what the yes. frick really like i gotta connect my hat to this magnet thing that lift me up and take me like it just seemed <laughs> so complex and so awesome i still i still think of this very it was highly. it was starting to get into uh storytelling right i mean you were, you had you had everything working here it wasn't about everything is moving. You know, you got, got even though it's a very simple story, there's a story there. You feel like you're attached to the character. You actually feel like you're, you, you're in the character's place, yeah. right? It's, that's, that's what video games eventually became. Instead of just a bunch of parlor games, it became, you know, something more like something you felt attached to. Yeah, and, and I will that, say, I will say this as someone who just was in awe of this game in the day. Right. Uh, I don't like it as much now. I don't think it's as good. Well, it's it's hard to listen to. And one of the reasons why, I know you probably heard a lot of these games we've been playing. Uh, this was not a first run on the Commodore 64. It was developed outside the 64, but it was, came pretty quick afterwards. Yeah. But it was developed in, with, uh, you know, not Sid Chip in mind. And so, yeah, it was uh, it was delicious. But I, I tell you, I really love the hard hat Mac uh cover that it came in came in like a big old five and a quarter uh oh, let me see this here disc disc folder thing that i showed you and it's got all this great you know guys call this great writing about hard hack look there was such an imagination gap uh for games during the early 80s that you know you couldn't you you, you didn't want to stick uh, or yeah they, that's right i forgot i forgot about this yeah. that's amazing yeah you don't you didn't want to stick you don't want to stick your graphics on the front of the front of the disc because you would realize you're playing some 8-bit computers instead of this fantastic thing they were selling you which was you know illustrations and photographs and all this other cool stuff that looked really neat yeah uh, but the packaging from that time always 
makes me laugh. It's a that crack up. Mac was a good one. Yeah, here it is. So the front of it's got like an actual photo of a dude, you know, wrestling with a girder, basically. Yeah, yeah. And on the back, you've got you know Mac, the Vandals, and Os- OSHA, which is yeah, OSHA. Yeah, they spell it OSHA. S H. Yeah. Sorry, O S H A. But come on, yeah, we know what that it's, is. It's OSHA. It's OSHA, and it is. Uh, it is great. They actually got. They actually got. Uh, they got a lawsuit brought against them. <laughs> they did. Um, by who yeah, the government or something or what uh yeah yeah and hard hack <laughs> mac osha runs around the game screen clipboard in hand trying to squash mac uh and so a california state senator dan mick cordadale yep. something like that mick cornadale took offense to electronics arts comic portrayal of osha as a video villain and dashed off a letter of complaint and uh it was anti-worker he says yeah. and it gave the children playing the video games the wrong idea about their friendly federal government six days later the store pulled the video game yeah pulled the video game. that was it those are the days by the way i just want to yeah. point you out to the uh the actual developer name who worked on this those guys that you mentioned yes areola soft areola soft baby areola soft <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great nice job that that whole cover is a little bit cheeky i think they also they, they talk about uh hard hat mac being you know uh working hard and drinking a beer mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff i'm like okay yep. i guess so e early ea yep early do what you EA. want baby yeah ea early access a yeah no not really that's not nothing to do with them all right no, let's play electronic it. well it wasn't even electronic arts it was electronics electronic art to engineers, what? Art engineers or some bullshit. Yeah. I forget it was to like artisans or something. It was it everyone was like, had like terrible long names back then and then they fixed yeah. them. Uh check this out if you remember this. <laughs> Play some actual music here or some gameplay. That's the ocean. Yeah, there's some ocean. Uh, this is, let's see if we hear some skating. Yep, here's some skating. Yeah, you were playing hacky sack before, by the way. There was a seagull that showed up. Let's see, what's this one? Oh, this is the skating one. <laughs> this this game's full of all kinds of sounds. All right, so the game is uh, uh, freaking California games in 1987. Uh, this yes. was a big deal. It had half pipes, roller skating, surfing, BMX, foot. Bag, they called it foot bag. Hacky sack. Come on, we all called it hacky sack. Yeah, I think they call it foot bag because they maybe hacky sack is a brand. I don't actually know. I assume that's so. why. I, that's why I figured too because they also didn't call certain things in other games by their brand. Like they, they have flying disc instead of frisbee. Yeah. So I'm assuming that hacky was a name, but I don't remember. It's been a while since I've done that. Uh, but the flying disc was offensively included uh, to to and roller skating. Uh, to attract the lady gamers. Yeah, because that's, that's the one thing we need to do is make sure we attract those lady gamers. That's what, they, that's what all the all the stuff I've, I've read about said. That's what they were they were thinking. It's great that we were in, make sure that we didn't like cut out part of your possible sales, hmm. but the fact that they felt like those were two of the feminine sports. I knew plenty of girls that played hacky sack and skated and yeah. surfed and everything else. I don't know why they felt like they just need to apply. They disc. need to appeal to girls who play video games just like everyone else does. So make it appeal to gamers because girls everybody. are gamers, assholes. Yeah. Anyway, gamers. Look at this guy. Look at him kicking that that ball bag or whatever they call. What's it called? It's on that ball bag. Yes, it's this ball bag. I, we foot always bag. called it hacky sacks. They call it foot bag here. Which I think is probably the Pretty sure hacky general sack term for it. Brand. This was my. This is the reason why I played this more than anything. I loved playing the foot bag and the half pipe were my two favorites. I didn't really care about many of the other games, but um, yeah, the foot bag was a lot of fun. You would, you would, uh, you just basically slowly move around, kick the kick the bag with your foot, and then or hit it with your head. And then you can turn around and get some points. You can do these little cross kicks and stuff. Uh, I always picked Ocean Pacific. I noticed whoever played this I went with their Ocean Pacific as their as their team. Mm. You could uh, early in the game you could pick a, you could pick a sponsor, I suppose. You also could pick pick two players. No, that's true. Uh, this yeah. is one of the this yeah. is one of the few two player games I had uh, back in the day, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It meant uh, you had to have two eighty dollar controllers at the time, but yeah, right. I we took turns. You could, I don't think you, I, well, some of them I think. I think some of you took turns and some of you play at the same time. I on my map, on the, the, this may have been uh, the Apple IIe, but the turn. Apple IIe had two ports, two serial ports, and you could do. Oh yeah, 
two yeah. controllers, and I remember there was no way my dad was ever going to do it. He was he wouldn't barely <laughs> let us touch the one. He's like, I'm not letting you tell you. You're going to break them, boy. How can, we, how can we get a second one? What, am I made out of money? That's right. Uh, real quick, I checked on the Hacky Sack name. It is a yeah. brand of football popular in the 1970s, currently owned by Wemo, which has since become a generic trademark, so you can use it now. Oh. But back well, then, good. you couldn't. Not in the eighties. It was a brand. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't use it. So, uh, but you did have the like, guest <laughs> brand supported stuff like Opie and that kind of stuff. So that's Ocean Pacific. That's that's kind of cool. One of these so somebody I, um, they almost <laughs> called it dirt bag. That's awesome. Dirt bag. Yep. It is kind of dirt bag. You always drop it and it gets dirt all over yeah, it. It's I dirt bag. Um, actually, yeah. I have to say, I think the surfing was fun. I enjoyed that. Well, the surfing was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I liked California games because it wasn't as joystick wrecking is the some of the other games like summer games and winter games yeah especially summer games do you ever do cycling in summer games oh yeah summer games will kill you it's like playing your uh, dad uh, would lose his shit like track and field <laughs> because it's it's all about doing the circle motion with your controller and i don't know what kind of controller you had a lot of controllers at that time had like little suction cups you could do you have the little the show that one up on screen for those who can't see it here oh yeah yeah this, this is, is uh this is so right. that's the one that comes with the mini right that's what they yeah, this is one on. that comes with the mini, and it's, it's similar to the one that you could get uh, for the Commodore. I always, but I had another one too. It was like a ugly red stripe thing that mm. was like palm, you gripped it with your palm, and the stick was a lot smaller. I can't remember who made it. Do you have paddles um, as well for like paddle games? I never, I never did paddles very much. I did have mm. paddles for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, but I don't think I ever used paddles uh, once I got to the Commodore 64, I can't think of any paddle games I played. We had paddles um, and joysticks and we don't know why my dad bought them either way. Yeah. Probably they probably the same reason. It's like, probably because, you know, when you had the Atari and stuff, the early stuff did have paddles, a lot of, you know, a lot of arcade games and a lot of, uh, a lot of early games was the, you know, the spinner controls and stuff that you would, uh, use for centipede and different games that would require the spinning. But yeah, I don't know. That might've been pretty cool though, because you could have done, um, I do remember playing some tennis games and things with that, but I don't remember playing on the Commodore 64, but it might've been well, might've been good mm. for some of these Epix games. By the way, those names, Epix, EA meant nothing to me at that point in time. It was later in the, uh, like, you know, like the nineties that I really started getting into electronic arts, maybe yeah. the late eighties, no but yeah. that was really about the Epix games. Oh mm -hmm. my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was so big into those games, all those sports games. That they were they did amazing stuff. I agree. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, they like you mentioned earlier, they did one called Winter Games. Since they, oh Canada, uh, since they couldn't use um, music like Olympic music, official Olympic music yeah. from eight, from the eighty four Olympics or any other time around then. Yeah. They started. They, they used the Canadian anthem for when he lit the torch. I think that's amazing. That, uh, but you could choose your amazing. country and you could hear different anthems and stuff. But for some reason, the the torch lighting, which was universal, was always the Canadian <laughs> national anthem. Yeah, um, I I never understood that, but I I, I dig it. I weird. like uh oh I I like the winter games. So of course, summer games was first. Yeah, and uh, I I remember playing a good bit of that. But then, like I said, I kind of went over to California games. Summer games, uh, like I said, the cycling thing, I've just I can't I, I can't even tell you how many times I've it was the worst controllers. It was the that worst. Thing. That I game guess. wanted to be um, uh, what's Nintendo's uh, dirt, uh, Excite Bike? It wanted to be that. I, oh, Excite Bike, yeah. But it wasn't. That. It wasn't as good as that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. It's not my favorite. Which originally, event. I did when I was digging through the history of some of these things. I did like the fact that the first Summer Games, which is the first one that was released in 1984. Uh, it was the originally it was prototyping. It was called uh, Sweat. Yeah, and sweat. it had a lot of the things to it too. Yeah, I'm surprised that they thought they were going to sell a game called Sweat. I just didn't see that. I mean, <sighs> Sweat. Can you imagine? When did when when was Jane Fonda dancing to the oldies, or was that uh, the other guy? Who was <laughs> she's doing <laughs> was that? She's doing that now. Oldies. I think she's still doing it. Uh, no, she. Right. You're now right. She, she, she was doing. Well, she was doing the Jane Fonda workout in the '80s, but so yeah. was Richard, not Richard Nixon, Simmons? Uh, Richard Simmons. No, was, is it Rich Simmons? Yeah, Simmons was also doing. Somebody he was, was dancing to the oldies. He was dancing to the fatties, or what was the name of it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not dancing to the fatties. What is it? Maybe it is dancing to the oldies. 
I don't know. I know what it was called dancing with the oldies. I, I don't know remember. That one. But that I'm was the thing. Sure. Sweating to the oldies, Sonda says. That was it. Sweating, sweating to the oldies. It was That's sweating it. with an N and an apostrophe, I think. There you go. I guess sweating was the thing. Sweating That's the reason why I said sweat. And then I said sweating to the oldies. Ah, yeah, whatever. Right. Sweating to the fatties. Uh, That's the one I want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was uh, good. I, this is the one I liked the most. I liked the, the Winter Games. Uh, for whatever reason, I found the events more fun. Uh, I thought this was a cool game. It also just seemed graphically like way more stuff. Yeah. Well, on. I mean, you. I mean, look where you live. I mean, you probably like the winter stuff. I, I do didn't have winter over here. Hell, so we had, had the Olympics stuff. here once and actually made money, which no one does. It's just crazy. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. nineteen eighty four. That was uh, that was when we were doing the Olympics, and so they made a Epics made a good little uh, good little bit of money from all that. Yeah, that's right. L.A. Olympics in eighty four, and then when was the the eighty eights? Were uh, who was that? Japan, Nagano, I think. Japan. I, I think you're right. I right. forget. Uh, anyway, so there's that. Now let's talk about the weirdest one on here. <laughs> Not the weirdest. It's pretty weird though. Um, but also, it's, in some ways, this thing was breaking ground, and yeah, we'll talk about it. So here's some sound of that. As you can tell, licensing music was a pain. So what did they do? They just used free classical music in games back then. That's what you do. Here's some typing. Here's on, here he is on a piano. You're saying to yourselves, what's this game? Well, it's a little game called Little Computer People. Yes. 1985. And people who know yeah. really know. And people who never heard of it are like, what? Yeah. What's that? It's, uh, I got to say, I absolutely love the character design in this game. It is the goofiest, <laughs> dumbest looking characters in a great way. Like, I actually really think they pulled off something here with, like, simple graphics and animation. Yeah. That are that I don't see in other games. First of all, there's more frames of animation going on with that. Look at that dog and that guy. Look at that. They're adorable. Isn't that uh, if you haven't seen Little Computer People? Oh my God! It was called House on a Disc because essentially the idea was that on a disc, a five and a quarter or five and a half, uh, you would stick that into your your to your ROM there to your uh, CD. Uh, no, what am I thinking of? Your disc. Your disc hole. <laughs> I was I was trying to read at the same time. Uh, so anyway, House on a Disc. Uh, you would your, your the idea was there was a little person inside everybody's computer yeah. and it would be randomly generated so everybody got a different uh, little character I, I think it was per disc I don't know if there was some kind of random seed or something but anyway that's what it's supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, and you basically take care of this little guy by feeding him uh, and it runs on a real time clock so you set the clock right away when you start the game and I think they stole his little house I think they stole Sims. And from this, I, yeah, I, this is definitely like one of the first, you know, people simulations for sure uh, that I'd ever seen. Uh, so, and but you get you get you do these little commands. The prompt command is to ask him please. So you can ask uh, your character to please write you a letter, and if he's in a good mood, he will run, go to his computer, yeah. he'll type you out a little letter, and uh, you can feed him. You can feed the dog, and uh, I don't think anybody dies. No, no um, deaths. I don't but think. yeah, so you just can, yeah, you can do stuff. You can, you can type. It looks you, like you can do book. Yeah, you can type book. He'll take a book. He'll sit down. And he'll read his book. Um, you can yes. say eat, and he'll go eat, which you need to do because he he'll get too hungry if you don't. I don't think he dies, but it, you know it's like that. Uh, if you yeah. want him to take a bath, I'm pretty sure you can type bath, and he'll take a bath. So it's just this like living world in a disc, which must have been mind blowing at the time. Um, I was. didn't play this, but this must have just blown people's minds. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. can you believe what, we're, what I mean, we're doing with games? You would start. You would start in the morning time before you go to school, mm -hmm. and you could just let this thing run all day. And yeah. you would just walk around your computer. You dad have a stroke. Turn this off. You're trying to run the power bill up. Yep. Um, it's you're burning. You're using up the CPU cycles. Yep. Uh, That's what your dad would, would say. My dad would definitely say that. 100. <laughs> percent That would be the words out of his mouth. <laughs> It's like Tamagotchi, gotchi, but, you know, on a disc and a computer had to run it, kind of. Yeah, computer had to run it. It would just, you know, load in memory and it would it'd just, it'd just run all day and you'd come home and he'd, he'd be watching some TV. Maybe he's maybe he's getting hungry, but he answers the phone. Oh, my God, when he answers the phone, he's so annoying because he's got that, he's got that, oh, you know, we, we like the Sims mumbles. Those all are pretty uh, okay and to the ear. 
Simlish? But man. Yeah, Simlish. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, 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 not here, though. This guy, he gets on the phone and it's like, rah, 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 rah. It's, it's, yeah. oh my God, it's the worst. But I, I also love it, too. I also love it as uh, well. I just think the character design is great. I'd love to see a modern take on this with that just, let, you know, even a mobile game or something where you, yeah. you, you just make all these ideas modern, but also just barely update the design. You don't need to do much. Like, yeah, I actually yeah. think this stuff is great. Uh, folks, at home, you can't tell him to go rub his nub in the in the tub. Okay, you can't do that. <laughs> rub his nub in the tub. Yeah, or stare three out a window. Men and a, three men and, in a and tub a rub. rubbing their nub. Right, it's no good. But at a do, you know, do you know? Do you know why this looks so cute? You know why, why it looks so good? Why? David Crane. David Pitfall. Crane. He did it. Let me let me tell you about a man who can take an eight bit computer or console <laughs> and just make something that is just fantastic. I mean, his style for characters. Oh yeah, is just characters and scale just freaking amazing. Now he's just he is amazing. I, there's no doubt about it. We got to do a whole thing. Yeah, with that guy, whole retro. We got to because there's one last game. I don't know if we have a chance to talk about it or not. You're going to talk about it. Uh, I am, but before we do that, I wanted you to hear this sound. I forgot to play in Winter Games. It's the sound of you flying oh. off on a ski jump, and I, we yeah. think it's great. We played a pre-show, but here it is. <laughs> Every sound there makes sense. So, say, so I'll do it in parts. Here we go. Yeah. Wait. Whoops. Sorry. Okay, sliding off, jumping and spinning. Yeah. The little whee, very cartoony, yeah. but it's you understand. Then you get on the back end this sound. That makes sense. You've landed in the snow. You've la- what yeah, the yeah. what the f is this? What the f is that? <laughs> is that the braking? He farted or something. <laughs> I don't know what he did. I guess you'd fart too. I don't know. Man. I would I'd, fart if I was that high up. I in don't the know air, how to. Yeah. yeah, don't stop me from farting. I'm going to do it. I mean, you you want to hold in your farts because that'll make you the lightest, right? <laughs> That's right. And now, then once you land, it's like, well, I got to get rid of this. Now, this is important stuff. This game I remember at my friend's house. I was so jealous. I don't think they had it on my Apple IIe. I don't think. I no, had it. everybody had it though. Yeah, everyone had this. Here it is. It's Check it game. out. <laughs> what the frick, dude? The it's laugh. Why is it even in there? Why is that laugh in there? Like, what is the point? Anyway, listen to this music. This is great. That is awesome. It is great. So there you go. Here's some gameplay. It's just running around catching ghosts. Oh, I should play some. Uh... <laughs> Hold up. Yeah. Yeah. And look, you start out in the car. Yeah, you start in a car. Look at that. Look at this out here. Oh, is this more David Crane business? Yeah, this is more David Crane business. Every time I hit something, I was like, "Holy crap, David Crane did that too!" He's a C sixty four genius. This guy. Yeah, yeah. Imagine being. Imagine getting to make a game about this incredibly popular, eternally wonderfully thought of movie, Ghostbusters. That's that's awesome. What a cool thing. It is awesome. But you drive yeah. in your car, you go to different jobs, you catch ghosts in those jobs, they give you points and you earn money. They didn't just give you points. You, get you cash. started out with you got to buy stuff and you have yep. a bank. Yep. And uh yeah, that's that was the that was the cool thing about this game. It was kind of unheard of. You started out with bank and you you kept you could save with passwords that would uh keep track of your bank amount because you need that bank because you had it you're operating a business. You're operating in Ghostbusters business. Yep. And it takes some money. It takes money to be a Ghostbuster. That's true. Yeah. Who's going to pay the rent on your uh, previously a firehouse? You know? <laughs> no. Zool? No. Zool? He's not going to pay for it. Exactly. No. One thing I wanted to mention, this is a, another Activision joint. As you can see, chat room at the bottom, their freaking fat logo out where everybody can see it. That's right. David Crane and Activision, baby, bringing another hit yeah. to your computer. Bringing a hit. Now. I'll always cherish this. Ghostbusters! <laughs> I'm never letting that go. I love that it's so, it's so maniacal. It's I so love good. It. Yep, it wins the X Chicken Award. X Chicken. Yeah. I think we should have a voice award on the show for the best. It'll be called the X Chicken, and there it's whenever go. there's voice work that's just insanely great. I think this week we have two good ones like this <laughs> and this. Ghostbusters! <laughs> Yeah, I love it. That's so bad. Anyway. It is so good. God, I'm so glad we did the Commodore 64 because it has such great sound, man. I I have forgotten how fantastic yep. that Commodore 64 is. It is a great device. The minis are awesome. 
I have Brian to thank yeah. for sending me one of his. I don't know. Yes. How'd you end up with two? I don't remember what the deal was. Why'd you have two? Uh, I was sitting an extra one. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. So I ended up yeah. with this extra one and I really like it. Um, uh, they're fun to emulate as well. If you, uh, I've been doing it on the Steam Deck. That's where I played all these. Yes. I didn't play them on the Mini. I should have. That's what you did, right? I, pl- I, pl- I did a little bit of the Mini. Um, because not thing all about these games the are on there, I don't think. Like right. hard hat, yeah, not, not most of the, the games are not on. There's 64 games, and it's none of these. I think it's set for Impossible Mission. Yeah. Um, Turkin definitely was not on there, but or maybe it is. Uh, anyway, you can load those <laughs> up from just uh, just you can load those up from uh, from a USB drive. It's real easy. You don't have to hack it or anything. So but that was that was pretty cool. But I decided I wanted to get a little better experience. Uh, so I loaded it up on my Mister FPGA, and oh. I played most of them there, and it was quite the good experience. I got to say, but I did learn something. Yeah. Um, all these emulators, I forgot that a lots of times you would put you would put your controller in port two on the Commodore. Uh, and That's so true. A lot yeah. of times I would go to play something. I'm like, it's not working. It's because I needed to swap joysticks. So if you're doing an emulation out there. And you can't get it to function correctly with the joystick. It's, you probably need uh, to swap the joystick. Just yep. a little tip. If you're for having the trouble, emulators out there. There you go. Yep, nailed it. Yeah. Uh, excellent. And a lot of that stuff's on archive.org, by the way. If you're looking for ROMs, tons and stuff. of it is because there's over like I think over ten thousand games that were developed for the Commodore sixty four. You better bet a lot of those things are abandonware or just donated to the community of, yeah. of or, wonderful users. Yeah, ninety nine point nine percent garbage. By the way, a lot of it's bad. Yeah, but that's because yeah. there was. That's because we're not. We're not. We've done a lot of console stuff that has its own uh, licensing things. Yeah. This is developing for a computer, and there's not no light. There's no license there. You just develop for the computer, and you freaking sell it, and you know this. This is how you do it, man. Yeah, like Brian this says, there's it. there's not no licensing. Okay. There's not no licensing, man, and you, everybody had a, a point of entry. The Commodore 64 was designed uh, for the masses and not the classes, so anybody could program a game in BASIC. Wouldn't be the best, but you could, uh, and a lot of my gaming was done uh, thanks to a lot of great game developers out there submitting their games to magazines, yeah. and I did a lot of coding, uh, transcoding over... Uh, code to play games that's a awesome lot. that's awesome my friend made yeah. games on his uh i made some on my apple too i made an adventure game that no one will ever see right uh, it was fun programming in basic was fun yeah. but there's- the thing is there was so much of it <laughs> yeah, yeah. you yeah. there's a lot of trash out there but there's a lot of great stuff as well and it's actually people are still even in 2022 are making commodore 64 games with the many things we've learned about game mechanics Still using that original hardware and making some pretty neat games. Yeah, I need to check more of that homebrew stuff because I love that. Big fan. Yeah. And there's a huge, there is a huge number of people who are fans of the Sid Chip style music and people are still making music with it. Yeah, I got to look some of that up too. I should have yeah. prepped some of that for There's the show. a huge scene out there for all this stuff. All right. Well, that is all well and good, but today we have to test our memories and guess our game. Destroy it. <laughs> we play a little audio to each other and we try to guess what game we picked. I'm going to start this week and I will tell you a couple of hints that'll help. The year was 1994, Brian. No, 1994. The consoles were the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the Genesis from Sega, and the Sega CD. Oh, it made it to the CD. It must have some good music because we got the SNES with one of the best sound chips out there at the time. Yeah. Genesis was crap, but the Sega CD might have helped it. It might have, but I only got audio for the SNES version, which is the version there I you played. Go. Uh, so anyway, it might be obvious. So I'm going to play it. We'll see if you can figure it out. Enjoy. What? Excellent. Awesome. Legendary. <laughs> Legendary. We're yeah, definitely well pulling some kind of moves. He's from 1994. He's a real cool radical wreck. Radical wreck. He's a red, he's a red, he's my real cool radical wreck. Radical wreck. He's a red, he's a red, he's my real cool radical wreck. He's my real cool radical wreck. Is it is it radical wrecks? <laughs> 
percent. It is Radical Rex. I told you to give it away. They literally I mean, sing it. Yeah, the guy literally says it like twelve times. I was hoping radical, you wouldn't radical, get it. Radical Rex. It's so bad. Uh, it's one of those '90s things where they just thought the word radical needed to be everywhere. It was just stupid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that. That is awesome. I haven't thought about that for like. Uh, what, what year was it? Nineteen ninety-three. Yeah, ninety-four, I believe. Ninety-four. Ninety-four. Yeah. yeah. And this was, uh, uh, it did okay. It was a fun little side-scrolling, pretty well-animated platformer thing. And you were this yeah. cool, radical little dinosaur guy who occasionally would get a skateboard and do like Sonic-style moves and then be real fast on screen. And then other times you were just jump, jumping and hopping and kind of being normal. Um, this is all right. This is an okay game for what it was like at the, the time. Like that you called him a cool dinosaur when obviously his name is Radical Rex. Yeah, it's Radical Rex. The, yeah, he's the, obviously radical. There's the T-Rex, there's the Radical Rex, and then the Carnosaur. Uh, those are the three dinosaurs. Oh that my matter. God, that's I. Oh God, I had, like I said, I hadn't thought about that in like about as long as I haven't thought about the game that you're going to guess from me. Yeah, it's an old poopy one, but fun. It's yeah. okay. It's an okay game. I just think that the, yeah. the adherence to like radical man is just a little much. It's a little much. All right, Brian, but I'm going to play I, yours. I, I love oh, games ahead. that embraced that because now they have a place in history yeah, that, that even if it's stupid i can still kind of go hey remember when radical was a cool word yeah that's true right. but no one yeah. does it now i say rad all the time and not it's not the same yeah no it's not uh all right let's guess guess yours give me your year and your whatnot here what have i got in front uh, of me? It, it originally uh released in 1993 for the snes and then the following year uh we got it on the sega genesis in 1994 mm. um let's see da, 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 do I, um how about this it's a parody game oh shit okay i have no idea what this is let me hit play we'll see what we get <laughs> Choplifter. Just kidding. Nailed it. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, it could be anything. Ladies Get and gentlemen, bit. here are the combatants for this extravaganza. Blue Suede Goo versus Helga. Oh, mama. <laughs> okay. Blue Suede Goo versus Zelda? Helga. Am I hearing Elvis? Oh. Hey, what's the hair, man? Hair, what's the hair, man? Uh-huh. <laughs> I love obviously it. obviously a fighting game. Um, what would this have been, though? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, what's the hair, man? Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh, I don't know. Um... Parody game, 1983, Sega Genesis. I think I played this on the uh-huh. SNES, I want to say. Oh, I oh, um, uh... Oh, it's the a one parody that's, uh, of Street Fighter. Does that tell you anything? No, but I, um, were they, was it the, when everything looked like clay? What was that called? Yes. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, they look like clay. What, uh, what was and it was a parody called? of Street Fighters. Street, Street Fighter. Fighter? Yes. Why are you saying, oh, oh, Clay Fighter. <laughs> 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 clay fighter all right i knew that clay fighter yeah clay fighter street, had all kinds clay. of stuff in there elvis looking dude yeah. and all that elvis and helga she was a viking uh lass yeah, viking so lass was, a young viking lass yeah. oh chat room had it a bunch look at all you guys with your clay oh fighter. yeah look at this they did yeah nicely done i think tondra Gosa got your first uh got your first pull there um, I knew I'd get to it. It just—I could not remember the two words being together. Clay fighter. Hmm. Clay fighter. It was some kind of fighter with clay in it. I don't know. What would that name be? All right. Well done. That was fun. Now this. Welcome to the treasure room. It's time for your emails. Playretroshow at gmail.com is the email address to use. We got one here from many. Oh, from many. Thanks from Mike. <laughs> many things <laughs> he usually normally you put your thing in the i don't know it's weird yeah i love it it's kind of uh, like when i worked at blockbuster and they used to say uh, i'm looking for that movie two thumbs up two thumbs oh, up no. you got two thumbs up that'd be great Good two thumbs up that's War- the review dummy yeah no kidding all right so this is mike from warwick uk and he oh, says warwick. hi scott and brian firstly absolutely love the show i found it fascinating learning yeah. of some uh, some of the retro gaming and reliving my own retro favorites 
Uh, he spells favorites with a U, which means he is definitely there you British. Go. Definitely yep. UK. 100%. Says, I took Scott's advice from last week's show and purchased Horizon Chase Turbo on the Switch. And it also happened to be on sale. It was it actually was good timing because it did go on sale. It immediately reminded me of the game I ever bought for my first NES, or bought first for my NES, which was Top Gear. I recently played Top Ooh. Gear, funny enough. Because Brian and I's next uh, the next episode might have a little Maybe something, something to do. Coming up with some mm. <laughs> anyway, the more I played it, the more it reminded me of racing games from the Super Nintendo. Uh, the playing and then sorry, then playing the Chili Campaign. I heard the soundtrack, which sounded exactly like the music in Top Gear. Would be interesting to know if the developers of this had anything to do with the Top Gear series, and would be interesting to know your thoughts and how similar they were. Many thanks, Mike. Well, Mike, I know for a fact the devs of that game, which just had its seventh year anniversary. So wow. it's, it's becoming kind of retro in its own way. Uh, sure doesn't look like it, though. It looks like it just got made. Um, yeah. They, uh, they, they have stated many, many times that their inspirations were things like OutRun, Top Gear, and a ton of other titles. So that's what they're trying to do here. Um, so you're not wrong to feel that inspiration. I don't think any of them had anything directly to do with those games, but they're definitely inspired by it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say about it is this game that we're talking about here on the Switch, PC... Xbox, PlayStation, uh, phone, it's everywhere. Uh, it's called oh, Horizon yeah. Chase Turbo. And for their seven-year anniversary, they added a whole new mode to the thing, uh, which is like a whole ton of extra content. So this is a great time to get it. And I think it's still on sale everywhere for like five bucks or something dumb. Yeah. Y'all cheap. should get it. It's great. It's great. If you for- like retro racers like that, I mean, this this has got the spirit. And this thing plays so good on the on the freaking Steam Deck. I can't say enough about that as a Steam Deck game. It's so good on there. Anyway, so if you want some retro with some new coat of paint, look no further than Horizon Chase Turbo. Okay? Okay. Do it. Play retro show at thank gmail.com. You. Thank is that you email. many thanks. Yes, thank oh, you many um, thanks. Whoops. Thanks many thanks. You're the manyest thanks we've ever had on the show. <laughs> Mike. We appreciate it, Mike. Uh, our next discussion will be Arcade Racing, Outrun, Ridge Racer, Daytona, Sega Rally, Rush. California Rush, California Rush baby. Ooh. Uh, all those games. Remember all those? We do, too. And we love them. So we're going to talk about them. Maybe a little, we'll, we'll veer into the console ports and stuff a little uh, bit. Get but it, you mostly get a veer. Arcade. You get a steer into the conversation. Ah, I see what you did. I see what you did. Uh, Ridge Racer 4 for the PS1. Hell of a game. It's based on the arcade game, and it's great, too. Uh, if you want to, or no, wait, was it Ridge Racer 4? Yeah, Ridge Racer 4, R, R4 was on the R, R4. console. I don't remember now, but I remember thinking, R4, yeah. I remember yeah. thinking, man, this is like direct, like arcade port. This is so good. It's just like it is it in the is. arcade. Anyway, we're going to talk about yeah, those the, racing yeah, games. R, R4 is definitely, it was, uh, I think it's actually on our PlayStation minis. And that's a good time for us to give away this PlayStation next week. Oh, let's do it. PlayStation mini. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, how should we, hmm. Hmm. We got to think about this. You know what it is? Here's what we'll do. You want a PlayStation Mini? Good. We got one for you. How do you enter? You're a patron. <laughs> Everybody on Patreon can. Order. Now, the reason I'm saying this is you've got a Mini to give away there, right? Right. Right. I have I a do. Mini to give away here. So oh, we'll, look at this. I know. So we're gonna have two Minis to give away. First, we'll do yours, and that will be a Patreon contest. Okay. The one after that, general public. All right. So one mini to the patrons, one mini to the public. Bim, bam, boom. Bob's your uncle. All right. Bim, bam, who's Bob? I don't know who Bob is. Or my my uncle. I did have an uncle Bob, actually. Yeah. People always said Bob's your uncle. I'm like, I know. I know. (laughs) I'm I'm aware. I know. He has no arms and legs, and when when he goes into the lake, he. uh, (laughs) <laughs> His name is Bob. The nice thing about doing it on Patreon is it's obviously a more limited group of people. Therefore, they have a higher chance of winning, and we'll definitely give somebody one there. And then the other Plus one will open it up. it's an easy contest. <laughs> yeah, it's an easy contest. We just go pick one of you. How about that? Right. Um, the other one, we'll, we'll launch it next week, and we'll tell you the rules uh, when we do. So watch for go. that. It's Ridge Racer, Daytona USA, Sega Rally, Rush, and most importantly, I think OutRun. All of these will be on discussion yeah. next week. If you were looking for pole position... Look somewhere else. That game is old and hard to play, and I don't like it. Okay? I. It is very hard to play. Not saying we won't eventually get to a pole position, only if we're going to cover the cartoon as well. Oh, we have to, dude, that cartoon. Yeah, so that's good. good stuff. Good and bad. Anyway, hard. that'll be next week right here on the show. In the meantime, uh, we get patrons uh, sign up all the time, and one of them this week, well, three of them actually, Seb, 
Oolong Brothers and Sensei. Wrong. Yeah, Sensei. All now qualify up. for yep. this PlayStation Mini. Yep, they're all qualified now. Will you be? Well, if you go sign up today, you can be. Patreon.com slash play retro. That's play or patreon.com slash play retro. You'll never get a commercial. Pre-show content every week. Monthly benefits you only get by signing up. No reason not to. Patreon.com slash play retro. Play retro show at gmail.com is our email address. Send us your feedback. We'd love it. Play retro show on Twitter. And for everything else, it's at frogpants.com slash play retro. That's going to do it for us. Hey, Brian, anything else you'd like to say before we go? Stay a while. Stay, Stay a while. And listen. Forever. No, and oh, I'm sorry. I was not, we're not doing uh, what's his beak? Okay, we're not doing it's, it's nothing to do with Deckard Kane. Okay. <laughs> he had nothing to do with that <laughs> intro. All right, that's it. Thank you all. Go play something retro. We'll see you next week. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com.